Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I'll teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is about the remove method in the ArrayList class. I'm going to open up my web browser to my website, javacjava.com, select begin and scroll all the way down to the ArrayList remove method. Now there are two overloaded versions of the remove method. Both of them simply remove a record from an instance of an ArrayList object. Now there are some things to look out for when it comes to the ArrayList objects that contain integer wrapper class objects. So the first, the first one has a signature basically where you pass it a, uh, you know, has a parameter of primitive int type index, right? Removes the element at the index and returns an instance of the element that was removed, right? <coughs> Excuse me. So the second one has a signature of remove and then object type. So the object O basically removes the first element in the array list that matches the object argument. Returns true if it's removed, right? So we have two different return types. One's a primitive Boolean and the other is basically an object type. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and come down here and highlight the source code. Hit Control C to copy or right click and select copy. I'm gonna move my browser off screen. I've got a shortcut to the command prompt on my desktop, but if you don't, you can create one really fast by right clicking, selecting new shortcut, CM, CMD, next and finish. It's just that easy. All right, let's go and open that up. Type in Java C, which is the Java compiler. Press compiler command. Um, you should see all this stuff scroll by. However, if you receive an error message, watch my tutorial on installing the Java development kit. You want to make sure you get that installed and configured properly before continuing. CLS to clear the screen, cd space backslash, cd is short for change directory and backslash tells it to go to the root. I'm going to make a directory called Java using the md command here. I'm going to go ahead and change directories to the Java folder. I already have that folder, but if you don't, it'll go ahead and create it for you. I'm going to make another directory here called ArrayList remove, right? And let's change directories to that. I'm going to notepad uh, array list remove .java. Array list remove .java is going to be the name of my source code file. All right, let's go ahead and open that up. Control V to paste or right click and select paste. This one's a fairly, fairly simple class here. Uh, we've got just a single class in this file here. Main method entry point. Um, we're importing Java util package here because we need the array list and the collections classes out of there. All right, so this is all fairly simple to start off with here. First thing I'm going to do is just declare an object return val. Now basically return val is going to be the value that's returned back when we invoke the remove method with uh, basically like an index or the remove method with an object here, right? And I'll explain why I did this as an object here in just a minute. But um, next thing I'm going to do is on this next statement is create a array list that will only allow string object types into it. States is the reference variable. And then I'm going to use the collections class, invoke the add all method. First parameter is states, and then basically the rest of these are var args. So we are going to populate the states array list with these values. And then we'll go ahead and display that to the console here. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and make sure this is saved. Let's come up here, clear our screen, Java C to compile this, right? Java to run it. And here's where we're at right now. We're at right here. Okay, so there's, there's our states array and that's everything that's in it, just as we expect. Okay, now let's come down here to this statement and we're going to remove at index number three, right? Bring my browser back over here, right? So the first one here removes this one at this index, takes a primitive int value there, and it'll remove that one at the index. Now remember, um, all arrays start off at index zero. So Alaska is zero, Alabama is one, California is two, and Colorado is three. So we should see by invoking the remove method, passing it the, with, well, invoking the remove method with the argument of three, we should get, uh, Colorado should disappear from our array list, right? Now that one will also return the object that was the um, object value of the one object of the element we removed, right? So in addition to that, return val should also be should be Colorado at that point. Okay, so you can see removing three, Colorado is removed from our array list, and our return val is Colorado. Now. Um, 
I would have had to basically either declare return value as either string or object, right? Obviously I did object here, but like for example, string return value equals that, right? But then I'd have to have another one here because in the next one, the other overloaded version of remove, um, returns a primitive Boolean type. I'd have to declare another value of Boolean, right? So when we come down here to states.remove and we pass it California, now remember California is a string literal, so, but that is an actual string object too, right? Return val there is going to be basically a primitive Boolean type, right? Now the auto boxing and the wrappers classes will basically turn that into a Boolean with an uppercase B wrapper object type, okay? So that works out very nice for um, just declaring this as an object and we know we're not gonna get any sort of strange data back on that, okay? So removing California, <clears throat> um, here's what happens there, right? So our states now equal Alaska, Alabama, Hawaii, and New York, right? And our return value is true. It removed California from the list. All right, so that's all fairly, fairly simple there. There's a couple of things should probably go over with real quick here. And, um, the the index is really self-explanatory there. Uh, you know what? You know what? I'm gonna just go keep on going. And I'll come back to this this thing here. I was gonna go over with there. All right. So let's take a look at the next stuff here, right? And the next thing I'm going to do is uh, declare an integers array list here and initialize it there. So basically, and I'm calling it just basically lowercase integers. It's gonna take integer class type. And I'm using the collection class and the add all method, passing it the integers, reference variable, and populating it with all this, right? Now, autoboxing turns 1001 into an actual integer class type, right? 1002, and then just, you know, to drive the point home, I actually put in new integer 1003, new integer 1004, and then, you know, autoboxing, autoboxing, autoboxing there, right? And so when we display that to the console, we get integers equals right there, 1001 through 1007. Okay, so up here, this is fairly self-explanatory. We've got the number three, represents the index, and then California, which represents an object. Okay, so now because of autoboxing, what if, you know, what if we have you know, an array list of integers, just like what we have here? What will remove three do? Will it say, okay, is this, let's remove the number three out of here, which doesn't exist, and we'll return back false, or do we, is it going to remove the index at number three? right? Which would be 1001 is at index 0, 1002 is at index 1, 1003 is at index 2, and 1004 is at index number 3. So, <clears throat> remove 3, basically it defaults to this version of the overloaded method where it takes in the index here, right? And it passes back the object of 1004. Okay, so, <clears throat> excuse me, hold on, let me grab some water here. Okay, so what if we want to say, for example, remove 1005? All right, um, what's gonna happen here? Let's come down to this next line here, ignore the rest of this, but um, we wanna remove 1005, what's going to happen here? Let's come up here and save this. Let's clear our screen, Java C to compile. It compiles just fine, no warnings or anything like that, and then we run it. Okay, so everything's cruising right along here until we get our exception, index out of bounds exception, right? Index 1005. The size of our um, integers array at this point is only six. You can see it contains six elements right here. So you can see it defaulted to the first one here. Okay, so how do we get it to force it to, to do this overloaded method right here? Okay, well, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and cast it to type integer there. Right? So let's go ahead and comment out this line that's creating a problem there. And you can see we want to remove integer 1005. Okay, now we'll go ahead and display this stuff to the console here. Right? Let's go ahead and save that. Let's clear our screen. Let's recompile, rerun, and it runs just fine. So you can see now down here, integers remove, and then we cast it to the integer class type 1005. It went ahead and took out. 1005 from the array right here, and the return value was true, so it went ahead and took it out. Okay, so that's basically how that works, and that's really kind of a special case scenario with the integer wrapper class there. And now one more thing I wanna go over with here is um, 
On this particular one here, it removes the first element in the array list that matches the object argument, returns true if removed. All right, let's come over here and let's add in, say for example, um, let's just do Hawaii right here on the end, okay? <clears throat> and let's, instead of removing California, let's remove Hawaii. All right, let's go ahead and save this here. Let's come up here, clear our screen, recompile, rerun. Okay, so um, when we remove Hawaii, you can see that Alaska, Alabama, California, you can see Hawaii is no longer in here in between California and New York. So remove the first instance, right? You can see the Hawaii at the very end is still there and it says return value equals true. Okay, now let's come here and basically these three lines where we remove it and then we display it and we display the return value is what we want to copy and duplicate here, right? Um, Let's go ahead and save that, right? And we basically want to get rid of both in, both of the Hawaii's in here, right? So let's go ahead and clear our screen. Java C, oops, help I compiled the actual Java file. And let's clear our screen, Java, let's run it now. Okay, so you can see here, after we remove it the second time, right? Hawaii is now gone. So the first time it takes out this Hawaii, right? Second time it takes out this Hawaii, now it's not even in there. And just for grins and giggles, let's go ahead and come down here and paste it in for a third time, right? Save it, clear our screen. Oh, yeah, first of all, what do you think is gonna happen according to the documentation, right? Removes the first element of the array list that matches the object, returns true if removed. All right, so based on that, we're just, I think we're gonna get a, a false return back there, right? That makes makes sense according to the documentation. So Java C, Java. And so of course that worked in this last one down here where it removed Hawaii the second time right here, we get true back. Now we remove Hawaii, uh, try to remove it a third time, we get false return back on that, okay? All right, so that is basically about it for the, the remove method there and both of its overloaded things. So I'm gonna go ahead and close out of this, close out of that. That concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.